Good afternoon. How are you? Well, let's see. The uh, Thomas Jefferson part of this is that the, it's about 46 degrees. Uh, the wind is at 3.4 miles an hour. I'm not making it up. And uh, it's a little chilly out, but the sun is out. It's late in the day, and it's going to drop into freezing temperatures this evening. So our animals are very glad to see us. <laughs> Uh, they recognize that we feed more generously, perhaps, than anybody who's here in our stead. In any case, uh, so what's the news today? Well, today's the day of the talking heads and all sorts of things happen. One of the interesting things happened on uh, the NBC uh, channel today. Chuck Todd, who used to host the show, was a guest on it today. And one of the topics of consideration was uh, Rana McDaniel who, until very recently, was the chairman of the Republican National Committee and who uh, was an election denier and was always accusing the uh, various stations, including NBC, of uh, selling hogwash. Uh, not believable. So, uh, Chuck Todd today uh, took to task the host of the show, his substitute, for uh, interviewing this new addition to the lineup, because NBC has hired Ronna McDaniel, McDaniel, despite what MSNBC seems to favor in terms of policy-wise. But uh, Chuck Todd was concerned and uh, He's expressing a view that we probably read, which is when she was with the RNC, she was an election denier. And today in the interview, she said that uh, she believed that Biden was elected. So the fair criticism he offered was when she was being paid by the, I don't know if he used exactly those words, I don't remember, but when she was working for, being paid for the RNC, she was an election denier, and now she supports the election. So what is her credibility worth in a business which is about that? So that was, uh, that stirred up things. It'll be interesting to see what the fallout is. And what if anything happens uh, to Chuck Todd? I, I don't wish it to happen. And if you can't have vibrant conversation, then what is the business all about? Especially on, on the Sunday talk shows. So, uh, there are other things that you might say are the canary in the coal mine. And that's a reference, of course, to if a canary uh, dies in a coal mine, that there must be something about the gases there. Uh, that disfavored the continued life of the canary. So what am I talking about? Senator Murkowski in Alaska is thinking of quitting the Republican Party for obvious reason. So that's, that's an interesting drift. And, and how is she a canary? It's not that she is, but the sentiment that I cannot put up with the, uh, Republic, with the Republican caucus have led me to this point where I've been uh, loyal from time to time, but now I can't be. Also, uh, the third party, it never made sense. We're going to have a third party, but we won't tell you what we stand for or who is going to run. <laughs> I suppose it's a poll maker's dilemma. You read polls that say the people like somebody else, but they don't know who. And when they do know who, they then realize how that person is imperfect for them to support. I mean, how many people would support Robert F. Kennedy Jr. on his uh, craze about vaccinations? And, you know, it's just ridiculous. And a family that's rejected him. And he's transparently using a family name and he's dishonoring it, in my opinion. And, you know, I see members of the family. I saw Joe Kennedy on the Hill. I thought he conducted himself well. And Kathleen Kennedy Townsend 
It's a magnificent uh, candidate, not fully appreciated in Maryland. You know, so goes the business. But this uh, candidacy of Robert F. Kennedy seems a manipulation in the states where he's managed to get uh, on the ballot, and now he's trying to pump more money and visibility into his campaign by holding people in suspense about what unworthy vice presidential candidate he'll choose. So, you know, Robert Kennedy is looking at 24 states. So, and I don't, I haven't studied, so I don't know if they are encompassing the battleground states that matter. Uh, we got the Princess of Wales in a very difficult and sympathetic situation as a young, at 42, mother and uh, a person with high visibility and responsibility that I don't understand to a kingdom when kingdoms exist without power to do anything because they're tied to whatever the PM, the prime minister, does. So I feel very sorry about her cancer diagnosis. And it, it does make, make you scratch your head. How does a person of 42 get cancer? And if that's not combinations of the poisons we let loose into our air and water and how they tell us that we have pieces of plastic inside our bodies now, maybe not like the fish that we see, you know, stuck with bags, microscopic pieces. And what are we drinking? How impure? What are we breathing? How impure? And how much... Does it affect us that a parent was affected? So we're going to see more of that. So that's a shame. But on the other hand, I'm sorry, princess, but you don't get to change pictures dramatically to represent events that didn't occur. So there's that. And she was rightly criticized for that. But she's deserving of our sympathy and concern for her health. Putin tells us ISIS is responsible for, I don't know, 100 deaths at a concert area near Moscow. And the suspicion that, it's, that ISIS had anything to do with Ukraine is they said they see some people en route in that direction. Well, and so they went west from, you know, west, northwest they went. Uh, I don't think that's enough evidence. So does it mean there's another instability elsewhere in Russia and Putin would rather have the deaths feed the belief system that has to do with Ukraine? By the way, because our Congress won't do a damn thing about Ukraine, Ukraine is literally making its own weapons Talk about homemaking in a strange way. The uh, Congress passed a money bill to keep the government running. And there is a motion pending that could kick the new Speaker of the House, a Republican, who can't please the Freedom Caucus in the Republican side on the House. So... He may get replaced again because he actually used Democrats to pass that bill. Can you imagine? Gingrich is sympathetic, but Gingrich thought McCarthy should go. These people all deserve each other. They really do. And uh, we don't. We want a government that actually does the job it was reported uh, to be responsible to do in our key documents. Now on Monday, we have uh, two pieces of news, big ones involving Trump. One is there's a hearing in the trial court in Manhattan to, to make decisions about the trial going forward with evidence, charges to the jury, that kind of thing. That should be pretty eventful. And the other is, I guess it's by sunset. Well, actually, no, it's by midnight because the day goes to midnight, right? So by midnight 
On Monday, Trump either comes up with 500 million or somebody says you don't have to. And uh, he has to explain how he could be at odds with his lawyers and <laughs> say it's impossible because nobody will take his property as collateral. So no one of the 20 companies they talk to is willing to stand at the bench and put that money down. If they give him any uh, leeway at all, it's further evidence that this criminal before us all, the enemy of the people, the worst president we've ever had, can be treated above the law. And that's a, that's a pretty terrible thing. So we have uh, a judge who I think will put the trial on course for mid-April. And if the courts do what they should, Trump will be able to continue his appeal, but the attorney general will be able to start seizing properties. So that's our crazy business. That's what I got. And uh, let's see what happens on Monday. Meantime, I wish you greetings <laughs> from our Cathedral of Trees. And with any luck, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.